going to go over this good stuff. So, did you just start it? Okay. Okay, so let's talk, let's talk business fundamentals now. <clears throat> the essentials of a cash-based physical therapy practice. Business, marketing, and sales. So let's go over business 101. Why do most small businesses fail? Okay, 40% of business are, are out of business in one year. Two other cash-based clinics tried to open up in Orlando and they're both out of business right now. But there's a reason why I'm still successful and my clinic's growing and other people have failed. 80% are out of business in five years. Small businesses in general, five plus years, 80% of these will fail. If you haven't read this book yet, this is a phenomenal intro business book if you want to open up a cash based clinic. The E-Myth. The E-Myth is the entrepreneurial myth and it states that just because you're a good physical therapist doesn't mean that you can open a business in physical therapy. There's a whole art to business of why some businesses succeed and some fail. So the whole reason why most businesses fail is because of the entrepreneurial myth. Just because you're a carpenter doesn't mean you can open up a carpentry business. Just because you're a chiropractor doesn't mean that you can open up a business. And that thought process or the entrepreneurial myth is, is why businesses fail. So if you're interested in business, I highly recommend you to read that book because we need to be a PT with a business mindset and overcoming failure. Just like that example of what I said earlier about overcoming obstacles. Yeah, thanks. Go Gamecocks. There you go. <laughs> um, I love this quote. And if you've ever done anything outside of your comfort zone and failed, this hits hard, like right here in, right here in uh, my heart. Fall down seven times, get up eight. That's so true. And if you're a private practice owner, you know what I'm talking about. You're going to always come into obstacles. If you've ever done anything outside of your comfort zone, uh, that's so true. You can't let obstacles stop you from opening your your dream practice or opening a cash based clinic. From the mentorship of what I do with physical therapists and what I see, these are some of the problems that I see that physical therapists come to me. They're not in a business mindset. They need some uh, positive thinking, overcoming obstacles, business mindset training to really help you be successful. They set expectations so low. They're like, I'm gonna charge $75 a visit just because I don't want to like, charge too much. They set the expectations so low. I just want to see three patients a day and that's it. I'm like, you're not gonna pay yourself that much if you're only seeing three patients a day. Um, they undervalue our services. Um, they're just taking very conservative measures, stepping into that cash-based model just a little bit. And I don't want to be over, I don't want to deter anyone away because of my cost, so I'm just going to charge 75 a visit. So they don't set goals. They don't use principles of reverse engineering. They have no guidance or path of where they want to go. And you have to start with the end in mind. I asked them this question, how much money do you want to make? And they're like, what? So either they're shocked by this question or they tell me this, obscene amount of money like I want to make 150 a year but I want to see three patients a day at $75 a visit which the math doesn't add up even close to that they have no business knowledge let's face it we're not taught this in school we have no business marketing or sales training they have no clue we don't know how to manage money a lot of us don't especially the younger generation and my generation we have a big retirement problem um, they don't know how to market and they have and we have no sales experience so you know, if you take a step back and you ask, like if I was on Shark Tank and you present with these problems, or you ask a successful CEO who did the Harvard Business Executive Training, who has an established small business or large business, who knows how to run a business, and we present these things, we're like, what are you doing? This is almost insane that you want to open up a business. It's almost as bad as this tweet. I'm not sure if you guys have seen this, Kanye West and Paul McCartney, this guy tweeted this. That's how we look trying to open up a business if you don't understand what you're doing. So I, I just get a kick out of this tweet. This is ridiculous. <laughs> and I was just trying to find a way to squeeze this in here. But, um, but us trying to open a business with no business knowledge, with no sales mar or marketing business, I mean, this is how we, we look when we're trying to open a business. In the <clears throat> entrepreneur's mindset and stuff so there's four questions you have to ask yourself and answer before you open up your business you need to know what is your estimated sales for your first year 
You need to calculate it and have a goal in mind. You need to know how much is it going to cost you to reach those sales goals and how much revenue do you expect to generate in year one. Okay? You need to know how much it's going to cost for you to be able to get to that revenue goal. Okay? What are you going to do with profit? Why not plan to be profitable? Plan to be successful. Because if you set your goals high and you shoot for the stars, even if you miss the stars, you're still up there. You're way up there. So set your goals high. Okay? Plan on being profitable. Don't plan to just get by and break even. Plan and strategize to be profitable. What are you going to do with profit? And then how are you going to pay yourself? These are four questions that you have to ask yourself before you open up your cash base clinic. Okay? And then from there, start with the end of mind. You're going to reverse engineer those goals and calculate exactly your one-year one year revenue goals, your three-year goals, and what is your projected growth? Right now, I'm expanding my clinic. I'm going from, in the Emith book, of a immature business, an adolescent business, to a mature business now. Okay, I'm expanding the clinic. I'm hiring more PTs. I am looking for any PTs who are board certified in the Orlando area. I need to hire someone. So, um, what is your projected growth? I just did all this stuff again because I created a three-year vivid vision right now of what I want my clinic to look like in three years and how I'm going to get there. And I reverse engineered every single stat expense exactly so I know exactly what I have to do every month to reach my goal of generating over $350,000 of revenue in three years and having four therapists on with a massage therapist. I'm still deciding whether I want to have a receptionist or can I use technology to, to do that. So I'm reverse engineering my growth. I want 25% growth next year, 15 and 10. This last year I had 40% growth. <clears throat> These are things that you have to calculate and reverse engineer. You have to know exactly how many leads I need to be able to generate that growth. How many evals, how many new patients, how much money do I want to make? What are your expenses going to be? My expenses are going up. Okay? You have to calculate all this stuff. And this is an example of my projected growth over my first four years. In the first four years, 77K. Second year, 145. Increased to 180 last year. Now we're projected at 218 plus, probably 225 in a cash-based setting. At first it was just me in these first two years, and then I hired another PT and with two PTs. So the goal is to keep that line going up. No, this is just sales. Yes. This is just, just revenue. So how many patients do you need? How do you calculate this? It's a simple system. Keep things simple. You don't need seven steps with this. All you have to need is opportunities, evaluations, and new patients. Okay? And then can you convert how many opportunities or leads, phone calls, emails, Facebook marketing, etc. Can you convert into evaluations and then from that eval, how many people are committing into a new patient? And then at the end, you get revenue. It's fairly simple, okay? So it's a simple business system, okay? Your leads, you got to convert them to an evaluation and then new patients and then from there you'll calculate and you'll get money. It's not that hard. Um, keep things simple, the KISS principle, okay? What market will a cash-based physical therapy practice thrive in? I believe you need to be in an oversaturated market. We're not going to fill the need in an underdeveloped market. You're not going to thrive there. I just don't think it's going to fit. You need to open up a cash-based clinic in an oversaturated market, and you'll thrive there. Because the oversaturation means there's a need and a want, and the services are wanted there. Don't open a cash-based clinic in a place that needs a physical therapy or in a rural area, open it in, a, in an oversaturated market. People make that mistake. People who use my training, I recommend go into the oversaturation because you're going to do it better, cheaper, and more cost effective than everyone else. So you want to open a clinic in an oversaturated market with lots of competition. Remember, you're going to create a new blue ocean market. You're not going to be in the old physician-based market. You're going to create a whole new market. You don't want people searching for physical therapy. You want people searching best way to treat hip pain and you pop up, okay? You don't want to limit yourself to physical therapy because then 
they're going to be just you're going after this market space versus you want a broader blue blue ocean untapped market space where you're going after these people okay so you have to get in an oversaturated market and it's you versus your competition my company is called pursuit physical therapy um, your competition is not just other physical therapists it's all these people ACOs physicians chiropractors massage therapists acupuncturists they're all your competition okay so it's good if you open up a clinic where there's lots of chiropractors lots of PTs lots of lawyers lots of economy that's a good market to be in for a cash-based clinic remember what Elon Musk told us okay if you're a business owner in an oversaturated market with lots of competition your service and product needs to be far superior than your competition okay so compare your clinic to other clinics be be a patient once sit in a doctor's office and see what the patient's going through and how bad standard care really is and you know um, understand not just when outcomes the patient experience cost effectiveness <clears throat> compare your product to someone to your competition's product and make sure it's better on all four of those okay and we could talk two hours on the patient experience your patient experience has to be flawless you need that Disney experience last night my wife and I ate over at the Waldorf Astoria we didn't have a, a, a reservation they said that it was fully booked over here in concierge services we walked we went over there um, even though it was fully booked they said they still got us a table the hostess asked my name when I sat down the first person that came up and greeted me greeted me with my name we need the Disney experience for your patients and your patient experience has to be far better than your competition so be a patient be a client sit back and see what happens when you go to Mazda versus BMW BMW has like waiting rooms with TVs and all sorts of services what is your patient experience when they first walk in the door is it a smile good ambiance good music do they feel welcome or are they just sitting there for 45 minutes with a whole bunch of other sick people and it doesn't look good your patient experience has to be flawless or the Disney experience so you know you have to have compare your cash based physical therapy practice versus standard care what do you have that your competitors don't one-on-one -on -one patient care better outcomes improved patient experience take advantage of technology um, you have a personal relationship specific customized care you're not just given a handout to go do some exercises um, the Disney experience okay the most successful businesses have the lowest cost and something that their competitors don't have okay so not only does your patient experience has to be flawless and better than your competition if you want to have a successful business your cost has to be down and I highly recommend this in cash-based clinics your overhead especially starting out has to be low okay so another benefit of a cash-based clinic is our overhead is really low at first when I first started out I could run my practice for a thousand dollars a month my average cost her visit was $30 at one point and if I'm charging 150 an hour paying myself 70 an hour I have $50 profit off of every visit because my cost per visit was so low okay so as a cash-based practice you have to have your expenses down decrease your overhead your cost or your expense per visit is low and if you can make it lower guess what you can pay yourself more if you could bootstrap and look at your business and try to run it more effective at a lower amount you could pay yourself more you could pay yourself hundred dollars an hour if you wanted to if you could keep your expenses down okay that's the awesome thing about it and just look at the example of in a cash-based clinic one PT working one hour say you charge hundred fifty dollars an hour that's the amount of revenue coming in your cost per visits thirty dollars you can pay yourself eighty ninety or hundred you still got twenty to fifty dollars per visit left over which is a pretty good pre-tax profit margin in a standard clinic if your average reimbursement per session is seventy five dollars an hour like in like in Florida you're seeing three patients an hour with huge facilities with huge equipment with huge expenses with lots of staff and you're making two hundred twenty five dollars an hour how much are they gonna pay you 
I remember when I was getting paid as a new grad after residency, they're only paying me like $35 an hour, but I'm bringing in 225 an hour. So that's something that you have to ask yourself. In a cash-based clinic, your overhead is so low, if you create true value, you can pay yourself a lot more. Will you appeal to the masses? Is a cash-based clinic scalable? This hasn't been really determined yet. I don't know a lot of cash-based clinics that have multiple locations. I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try it. Um, and this is what's interesting. This is the <clears throat> law of diffusion of innovation. And it's just looking at the tipping point and can a cash-based practice appeal to the masses to get past this tipping point? Because this 2.5% of the market, these people are all the people that see the value in what you do, they're willing to pay cash, they want the best. These are the people that want the new iPhone and stand outside for 10 hours to get the new iPhone. These people want the best. These are innovators, maybe they're highly successful, people. The next 13.5% is the new adopters that look online. Oh wow, you have a hundred five-star five-star reviews. That's pretty impressive. Maybe I'll go and see the, uh, this guy. Um, so the question is still up in the air. I don't know if cash-based clinics are fully scalable yet. I don't know too many people have multiple locations yet, but I'm going to try this in the next five years. If you haven't seen this TED Talk, Simon Sinek's TED Talk, why is phenomenal. You could sit there and listen to this and break down so much from this. And this is where I got that concept of the law of diffusion of innovation. Um, people do not buy what you do or how you do it. They buy why you do it. And this is what your business and marketing needs to target. They don't care about the manual therapy. They don't care about your certifications. It's all about why you're doing it. They don't care about what you're doing. And if you can tap into people's why, you'll really have a great marketing strategy in business and et cetera. So the big picture in business, you're gonna have to, again, go back to decrease the cost of care per patient, direct access. You need a system that delivers better results, a better patient experience, increased patient satisfaction, patient goals and values are placed first in a cash-based practice. It's a new business model for PTs. And I, I'm biased, but I think it's better. It's just better, hands down on all aspects. From the patient, the provider, the care, I, I think it's better. And I can't wait to publish research to support this. So in business, change is inevitable. It's up to you to decide whether you want to grow or not, okay? Changes are always going to occur. Healthcare trends are always going to occur but it's up to you whether you want to be successful and grow your practice. So let's talk sales. So I was in Pittsburgh eating a Permany Brothers sandwich and I ran into Mark Cuban who's originally from Pittsburgh and I asked him if you guys don't know what a Permany Brothers sandwich is you gotta to go to Pittsburgh they just you go into this like older restaurant they take some bread put some turkey whatever meat you want some fries some coleslaw slap on a bun and just give it to you so it's called a Permany Brothers sandwich you gotta try one Mark Cuban's originally from uh, Pittsburgh and he told me this no sales equal no revenue equals no business so if you don't know how to sell and you don't have sales you're not gonna have revenue and you're not gonna be in business so long so we have to know how to sell we, know how to, we have to know how to sell our services, okay? And there's a seven step process. This is where you have to go into the psychology of selling and designing a sales process, okay? We're not trying to be used car salesmen. You need to establish real rapport with this patient, whether you're talking to them on the phone or talking to them during, during the eval. Better yet, you need to identify if this is your ideal patient or not. Why go through a whole sales process if you're talking to someone who isn't in the right mindset isn't your ideal client and isn't going to come to your clinic and pay cash based services like i have a screen you can't see a medicare patient you know for medicare covered services that are deemed medically necessary so why not have a question real quick if someone calls who's older age who's a medicare patient ask them a question real quick rule them in rule them out and be done don't waste time on the phone with them when you know you can't see a medicare patient um, you got to identify pain and emotion People make decisions off of pain, love, fear, emotion. You have to highlight and bring out, you know, what, what is their pain? What is their emotion? What do they really want? What do they really miss? Okay, you have to ask questions that. 
organize a plan and, and, and a budget. If you're asking someone to pay $2,400 for their treatment, you better break down a timeline, exactly what's causing their pain, what are risk factors, what's their prognosis, when do you expect them to be better. You should have a whole budget and a plan organized to tell them what they're going to get with your package. Are you talking to the decision maker or not? If someone's not in charge of the funds, you know, invite the spouse in next time and get them in there and explain the process again. Don't let the patient just go home and say, I went to this guy today, he wants to charge me $3,000 to treat my back pain. The guy's gonna be like, no, let's go somewhere else. You need to know if you're talking to the decision maker or not because that's gonna help your sales. So if, if you're not, you need to design a strategy to overcome that problem so you can commit the sale. And you gotta provide the solution to their problems, okay? And then the last step is the close. You gotta be able to close the sale. Okay, how does this, how does sales work in, in our system here? So we go back to our business. Opportunities, which are leads, evaluations, and new patients. Okay, when someone calls, can you get them into an eval? This is the phone call process. You need to have a script written out of exactly what you want to say to convert that opportunity to a new eval. Okay, from evals to new patients, that's your eval sales process. That's your evaluation. These are the two main points that you have to master in sales to generate more and more revenue. So in one month, if you have 30 people calling, how many of those can you convert to an eval? If you don't do anything right, you'll get two out of 10, okay? My goal is this step from here to here. If 30 people call, maybe I get 20 in for evals. And then I have a high evaluation to new patient rate, so maybe I get 19 in, okay, as new patients who are paying. That's a very high conversion rate, and that means that my processes are working. My goal is to be around 50 to 60% conversion rates from the total system, okay? If you don't do anything and don't know how to sell, you'll get two out of 10, okay? But you can't run a business that way. You have to learn how to con increase your conversions through each step here. Touchpoint integration, this is essential in, in the sales process and in your business, okay? We could talk the whole, I mean, this could go in depth for two hours again. Every point that that prospective patient experiences your business and your system has to be flawless. It's kind of the patient experience, but it's broken down into each touch point, okay? From the time they walk in the door for the new eval to the eval, to the follow-up, to the treatments, to the discharge process has to be flawless. Or the patient's experience touch points from everything, okay? You have to break down your system and analyze if there's a positive response or a negative response and how can I make it better, okay? And it goes even into more depth. You can go through the whole life cycle of your patients from when they're finding you online, excuse me, from when they're finding you online to the discharge process to get people back in, you can use this touch point integration concept in the life cycle of the patient, okay? Um, so you have to be able to go through each touch point and really create a long lasting patient relationship, okay? In a cash-based clinic, if you're getting people better, faster, and fewer visits, this is a problem that I run into because I'm all about solving the root cause of someone's pain. I don't want someone coming back to me eight months from now with the same pain, with the same problem. So this is a problem that I have to solve. Because if I really do what's best for my patient, they're not gonna come back to me for the same problem. So I have to design strategies to get them to prefer other people to me, or if they get a new injury that I'm the first person that they think of, okay? I don't want them coming back with the same problem. My philosophy of why I started my practice was to solve the root cause of people's problems. And it's a business problem because I'm decreasing the cost per session, decreasing the money expense per patient. That's a bad business model. So you, I have to design touch point integration for the life cycle of my patients to get them to refer more people, to come to me as if, in case they get a new injury, okay? So um, it's all about, sales is creating a meaningful relationship 
that can be the foundation of a lasting business relationship. So it's not just a touch point integration of one session or your sales in that one time. <clears throat> it's really taking the lifestyle, I mean, the life cycle of that patient and getting a good relationship with them and getting them to refer other patients to you and um, <clears throat> creating a lifetime of, uh, like a lifetime relationship with that patient. Another Robert Kiyosaki quote, selling is the most important skill as an entrepreneur. I'm not talking so much about selling a product, but you gotta sell yourself, your team, and the deals. You have to sell yourself with the mindset to overcome any obstacle. You gotta sell your vision to your employees. You know, you have to learn how to sell products. So selling is essential in a cash-based physical therapy practice, okay? Good, we got 15 minutes. So let's talk marketing. <clears throat> I'm gonna talk marketing about our physical therapy brand, how marketing fits into the cash-based system. I'm gonna give you five strategies that you can start using and what it means to have ROI, or your return on your investment. It's a basic principle that a lot of PTs don't understand because if you spend, if you spend $700 but get 100 back, your return on investment is horrible and you're not gonna be in business long. So, why do we need to learn marketing? So, it's a really cool example. Every couple months I go to way to the beach for like a three or four day weekend, rejuvenates, clears, clears my mind, and I go for runs. And I'm running and I see this guy selling watermelons on uh, the side of the road. He just has a pickup truck and a whole bunch of watermelons. I asked him, how's the sales going? He's like, bad. So for every 100 people that drove by there, he only had like one or two sales. So I was like, why don't you put a sign saying fresh watermelons? You know, so maybe if people driving on both sides, they see that he's selling watermelons before they pass him, maybe it'll stop. Maybe he sells five out of 100 people who drive by. Why not learn how to market? Why not have a big sign that says fresh local watermelons and put some nice colors on it on both sides of the street so you're getting both sides of traffic and maybe 20 people stop out of 100 that drive, that drive by. Better yet, tap into the psychology of marketing. Two miles down the road on either side of your watermelon stand, your first sign should say, are you thirsty? For some fresh local produce is your next sign. Fresh local watermelons. Who doesn't want fresh fruit? Who doesn't want to support local business? Get them in the mindset so when they get to your watermelon stand, everyone's stopping to get these fresh, unbelievable wa watermelons that are three bucks. Better yet, add a sales strategy. Instead of selling wa one watermelon for three bucks, have a stand there with a fresh cut watermelon so they can sample it. This is the best watermelon ever. I'm gonna buy three of them instead of just one. So use marketing. You know, we have to implement effective marketing strategies, okay? Those days of sending brochures out to zip codes to hope that you get a 1% a return, there's so much better ways of doing things. So I have a YouTube video after my experience with that guy. You know, it really just highlights the importance of we have to learn how to market our services, okay? Um, let's face it, physical therapy is not cool, okay? So I'm not sure if you guys know who uh, Beef Johnston is. He, he's a professional golfer. Um, Golf Now was live with him in a pub over in Europe. He had a Wu-Tang Clan shirt on and a Pittsburgh Pirates hat, and he was talking chipping in a pub drinking beer. And millions of people were following it. I can do a Facebook Live session, the keys of fixing shoulder pain. I get no one. Okay? So let's face it, physical therapy is not cool, okay? Um, the current status of physical therapy, again, if we're gonna market to the public and create true value in the public, you have to understand our current status. The public doesn't know what we do. They think we're glorified trainers or post-op rehab, you know. <clears throat> they don't know about direct access. Most physical therapists don't market to the public because they're so set in the old way of doing things, they're marketing to physicians, okay? If you ask the public if they have low back pain, who's the first person that comes to mind? A chiropractor, okay? So we have to learn how to market here. We have an up, uphill climb. Physical therapy is not cool. 
someone's not going to share on social media, I have pudendal neuralgia, I'm going to my physical therapist for that. So um, people don't share posts about uh, physical therapy services most of the time or let the public know that I have a problem, I'm going to share it with everyone. Um, the public doesn't know about us, the public doesn't know what we do, we're in an oversaturated market. It's hard to compete against the bigger markets. Florida Hospital is my main competitor. They have lots of funds. They dominate the low back pain searches. I almost can't compete with that because it's not worth me paying more money per, per click when Florida Hospital has unlimited funds. So, and, and we're not trained in marketing and sales. So we do have an uphill climb, okay? The good thing that it works. 95% of my patients are direct access. I have one DO and one MD that refer to me about once a month, and that's because they were both patients of mine. So direct access marketing works because all my patients are direct access. I don't rely on physicians to um, refer patients to me. My goal is to be successful long term, so I want to create a system that I don't have to rely on physicians. So I'm going directly to the public. The good news is it works. So how does marketing fit into our system? We already have our system, our three-step system that generates revenue. We know how sales works in this. Your sales is all about your conversion rates from your opportunities to your evaluations to your new patients. Your marketing is what's gonna create the opportunities, okay? So you'll see a lot of people who have like a funnel system. Your marketing and the money you spend on marketing is gonna funnel your opportunities and create leads for you. If you're spending $500 on marketing, and you get no opportunities from it, your marketing's broke, okay? You need to fix your marketing. If your marketing is generating leads, like you have 20 leads, but you have one eval, your phone call process is broken. You have a selling problem. You see how the stats kind of work and you can manage your business this way? If you spend $1,000 on marketing, you have 50 leads and you get 25 evals from it, but you get one new patient, your eval process is broken and you, and you gotta fix this. It's a simple couple step system how to run your cash-based clinic, okay? And with proper training, you can analyze and fix these things before they even happen and you can make sure this system is fully functional so this is just skyrocketing, okay? So let's go over five strategies for marketing. Don't just you don't want people searching for physical therapy. Start off targeting a niche market. Who do you want to see? What type of diagnosis do you want to see? And then go out and get them, okay? So who is your perfect patient? Identify a niche market or a certain diagnosis and design a marketing strategy to go get those people, okay? Don't just worry about general people or general strategies or sending flyers out to mass audiences or, art or putting a a magazine editorial in there. Identify who you want to treat, what diagnosis, and go out and get them, and design a marketing strategy specifically to go get them. Stop selling physical therapy. And the reason I say this is because if someone goes through the current state of healthcare, primary care physician, orthopedic, they're in the insurance mindset, they're already using their, in, their uh, health insurance, okay? and then they were told to just go do physical therapy. So you're gonna have a really low conversion rate because they're already in the mindset of using their insurance, okay? You don't want people searching for physical therapy coming to your clinic because a doctor had probably told them to go do physical therapy. And you're gonna have very low conversion rates because it's the wrong patient. Stop selling physical therapy, sell the outcome. In your sales process, you're not selling physical therapy. You're not selling what they do. You're selling, I'll get you back to running the race. I'll get you back enjoying your vacation. I'll get you back to being symptom free. Or you know, give them a realistic expectation um, if, if it's a complex case. It's all about their why, what is their why, what's their results, bring out emotion, bring out pain, happiness, and, and like identify what their goals are. Sell them their goals, okay? <clears throat> you can't brand market a service if the public doesn't understand the brand. People know what Kim Kardashian is. She can sell her brand. She can have an Instagram account with millions of followers, post one thing on makeup, and sell millions of dollars. 
Nike. We know what Nike is. We recognize the brand. You can't market the brand when the public doesn't even know what the brand is. So you have to stop marketing physical therapy, sell the outcome. And it goes back to that Simon Sinek. You know, you got to target and address the why and the why and understanding your patient's why and goals is going to drive the behavior and then to take action. Okay? Um, the goal is not to do business with everyone who needs what you have. The goal is to do business with people who believe in what you believe. Okay? These are the people that you will attract. Three is fix your website. <clears throat> I go to so many PT's websites. It's all about me, my credentials, my training. I do laser therapy. I do this treatment. We have compression therapy. We have manual therapy. Everyone's PT's websites look the exact same with some weak testimonials to say everyone's nice here. And it's all about me. If you look at the most PT websites, it's all about them. Okay? They're missing the whole goal. It should be all about the patient, not about you. It doesn't matter what you do, or um, it's not about you or your credentials or your training. It's all about the patient and what the patient wants. If you can match your website to what the patient really wants, you'll get a lot more conversions. Because the only goal of your website has one goal, to get that prospective patient looking for services to call. That's, all it, that's the only goal. Because if you're getting hundreds of people going to your website but no one's calling, you gotta fix your website. You want people to go to your website, but the whole goal of them is to get them to call. Create value on your website enough that someone goes to your website and says, man, I'm gonna call this person. I, I want this guy to treat me. Look at, his, look at his reviews, look at his ratings. That, makes, that video makes total sense. That's why I failed other treatments. I missed the root cause. Give them a reason to call. Your website needs to get these people to call, and the website needs to be all about the patient. <clears throat> Again, we're in an oversaturated market. How are people going to find you? How are local people searching for hip pain treatment in Orlando going to find you? So you have to dominate local searches and SEO. Create SEO on your website. SEO is search engine optimization. If you're targeting hip pain people, understand the keywords that people are, are typing and use them on your blogs, use them on your website. You know, that's like a lot of times you can outsource this and get a Google expert to do this stuff for you or do a pay per click campaign. Um, hit pain treatment Orlando, have an ad that pops up in the top section to target hit pain treatments. You know, there's strategies that you can use to thrive in an oversaturated market. You need to dominate local pages. If you pulled out your phone right now and just searched best Orlando physical therapy, you're outside of my range right now because I'm more downtown, but I want to make sure that my Google listing dominates every, all of my competitions. I want my testimonials to stand out, I want pictures, I want my testimonials to tell stories, I don't want just nice physical therapists go here, good experience, okay? You need to make your pages Google, Bing, Facebook, Yelp, your pages have to stand out more than all of your competition, okay? And again, I don't want people searching physical therapy Orlando. Maybe if someone wants the best, I want to come up. But most of the time, my local searches are diagnosis-based on Google. Because remember, Google, you want a diagnosis-based search. Facebook, you want to create an ad that targets a niche market. Social media pages, I went over the stuff. You need to have a YouTube channel. Um, people love video, they're tired of reading. So you can create a YouTube channel, optimize it, share the videos everywhere. People love video education. Facebook page, um, Facebook is more of an advertising platform. You should still have a Facebook page because there's still value in it. It comes up in local searches and people can post reviews. But Facebook learned how to make money so we have to pay to get our content out to our audience now. So it's not as valuable as it used to be, but it's a great advertising platform, a marketing platform to target your niche market. What replaced how Facebook used to be was Instagram. Instagram is the free outsource to get the followers, and when you post something, everyone gets it. Instagram is huge. I have an Instagram strategy. It costs you nothing except time, and I've generated over probably 4,500 sales just from Instagram right now. So if you use Instagram right, you can get your target audience, and it doesn't cost anything on there. Pinterest, I, I started out with that. I don't use it anymore. Testimonials, the last thing. 
Your testimonials need to stand out compared to standard clinics. You need to get your patients to tell a story. And when a patient comes to you and you get them better, they're gonna love you, they're gonna share their testimonial, they're gonna, they're gonna wanna help you as a small business, um, they wanna see you succeed, and they'll tell their friends and family about you. So you need to design a strategy to really get your testimonials to tell the patient stories, okay? Not just great therapist, go see them, loved it. You know, have the patient tell, tell the story. Right now, we have 125 five-star reviews on our Google business listing. My next competitor has maybe 20. So if you were a patient searching on Google for best physical therapy Orlando, and you see my listing with 125 reviews, you're probably gonna go to my page, and then you're gonna see my testimonials, and then you're gonna go to the website and see more testimonials, and about all about solving the root cause of your problem. So you see how your page has to stand out more than everyone else's? Because when people are searching online for you, your testimonials are gonna really do what's, um, it's gonna make you stand out more than your competition. Okay, so overall the cash-based business, we'll highlight um, one quick question on return on investment and then we'll finish up. So if you're gonna spend money on marketing, if you spend $500, you gotta work it through this whole system and the goal isn't to get $500. The goal is to spend money here, run the system, and maybe get $5,000 at the end, okay? You wanna be able to look at this as an investment, not an expense, okay? So when you're looking at spending money on marketing, if you spend 1,000, can you make 8,000 from this marketing strategy, okay? You don't wanna spend 500 to make 100. You wanna spend 500 to make 5,000. That's a great thing about business. You can look at it as an investment in your marketing, make sure it works, make sure your system works, fix everything, and in one month, my, like in a pay-per-click campaign on Google, I spent 1,000, I made 8,000 back. That was my best month on a pay-per-click campaign. And that's just w one strategy, okay? So it's essential if you're gonna spend money on marketing that you get your return on your investment. So the essentials of a cash-based physical therapy practice. So we hit some of business principles, we went over some marketing strategies and what to do, what to pay attention to during marketing, and we went over the sales processes, okay? So we went over the fundamentals. And in general, okay, big picture, a cash-based physical therapy practice, you know, what is best for the patient will dictate care. You have no insurance limitations anymore. You can show better outcomes and give your patients an unbelievable patient experience. You can get patients better in fewer visits and do, or do it for cheaper compared to standard care. Learn the fundamentals of business sales and marketing so your business can thrive and you can overcome the e-myth and you can have a successful cash-based physical therapy practice. Again, I think it's adapting to the trends. Um, the future of healthcare, outpatient physical therapy. I think this is the future. It's not for everyone, but I think that you can really do what's best for your patients. You can thrive in a healthcare reform economy. You, I mean, it's just a win-win-win on so many levels. We just have to be able to like do it right. So if I ask you this question now, in the current state of everything I, that, that I went over, I hope that if someone asks this question to you that you feel a little more confident and you have some ideas to get you thinking whenever you leave here, hmm, I think I could open a physical therapy practice. I have some basics and some blueprints, I have some books to read, you know, I have some resources now on what to do, and you're thinking in that entrepreneur mindset, that business mindset, and uh, I'll finish off with this quote from Jim Carrey, he says, my father could have been a great comedian, but he didn't believe that it was possible for him. So he made a conservative choice. Instead, he got a safe job as an accountant. And when I was 12 years old, he was let go from that safe job. And our family had to do whatever we had to do to survive. I learned a lot of great lessons from my father, not the least of which was that you can fail at what you don't want to do. So you might as well take a chance in doing what you love. So if you believe that you're a great physical therapist and you believe that you can help people and do it in a better way, you know, I think that you owe it to yourself to push yourself outside of that old mindset in a, in a safe zone, in, a, in what you're comfortable with, and 
with the correct guidance and the training that anyone can open a cash-based physical therapy practice. So most people kind of back off of the concept or have a negative mindset whenever someone says cash-based physical therapy. Oh, I wish I could do that, but I can't. You know, so a lot of times, you know, you want to be happy in life with your career. You want to be able to pay off your student loan debt. You want to help people, help patients, have a growing business. And I think it's all possible if you do take that jump in the small business in a cash-based physical therapy practice. So there's a list of references. My contact info is here. You can pull out your cell phone real quick and send me an email if you want the, my slides. Um, it's simple. The website's cashbasephysicaltherapy.org. The email is cashbasept at gmail.com. If you want a copy of the slide, I can send it to you. There's all our social media links. Yes, Facebook is up there twice. I have a closed Facebook group. is my one-on-one -on -one forum for people who are opening cash-based practices. Um, good. And then we'll finish off with this. Do you believe in physical therapy in the future? Because I believe the future is as bright as your faith. So um, we're going to finish off with that. I know I ran a few minutes over. I can stay here and answer any questions that you may have. Um, I'm in no rush to get out of here. But with that, the lecture is going to be over. And f feel free to send me an email if you have any questions for me. Um, you can find me easily online. Otherwise, thank you for coming. And uh, I hope to see all of you opening cash-based clinics within the next year or so. So thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.